Silence for a moment for uh, the passing of Dave Chan. Uh, we all know Dave's importance in this community. And, you know, when, you, when people would think of the Poconos, I think they absolutely believe they think of Dave Chan. And he was um, loved by many, he was a mentor to many. So we just take a moment to remember him and his family. Okay, thank you all. Okay, first item we have is. Public comments or questions concerning today's agenda? Seeing none, we are going to, let's see, we need to, we need to just, well, let me amend the agenda first, then we'll move. Then we'll move. Um, we need to amend the agenda to include resolution 2327, and we'll number that as number 2A under new business. Okay. Okay. So, with that amendment, can I have a motion to approve the May 3rd, 2023 agenda? Motion and second. Motion and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we're going to jump, though. We're going to go all the way to uh, under new business, because it's exciting time. That's where we have all these young kids here. Um, so, we say, I guess. so we're going to go to new business and number three, and I'm going to ask for a motion to adopt resolution number 2325, Tick-Borne Disease Awareness Month, May 2023. Motion and second. Motion and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Walden will read the resolution and then we'll have some presentations here. This is an important resolution, but I drew the uh, short straw because, quite frankly, the wording here is not simple. So bear with me. Whereas tick borne diseases, which include Lyme disease as just one of the many pathogens, is a bacterial infection transmitted primarily by ticks and is caused by Spirocheta. Borrelia burgdorferi. Tick-borne diseases and disorders other than Lyme include anaplasmosis, babesiosis, Bartonella, Ehrlichiosis, Hawalsen, Tulamaria, all of which pose a serious health threat. And whereas the Pike County Commissioners recognize the severity of this endemic issue, and formed the Pike County Tick-Borne Disease Task Force on May 20, 2015. And whereas the frequency of, of diagnosed and reported tick-related disease cases has increased dramatically over the past years, and in 2013, the CDC released a report stating that the preliminary estimates indicate that approximately 300,000 Americans are diagnosed with Lyme disease each year, and this amount is approximately 10 times higher than the number of cases previously reported to the CDC every year. And whereas the CDC study reports a disproportionate increase among children and recommended public health action to call for an increase in targeting prevented, prevention strategies, tick avoidance, early disease recognition, and early treatment and intervention. And whereas tick-borne diseases are not always presented with the telltale bullseye but can produce early symptoms, including a rash or flu-like symptoms, such as fever, muscle aches, headaches, and fatigue, that can easily be misdiagnosed. And whereas a tick check should be a standard practice after spending time outdoors, since residents and visitors can greatly reduce their chance of tick pathogen transmission if they take proper precautions while engaged in out outdoor activities from early spring through late fall as well as during a warm, warmer winter season. And whereas the early clinical diagnosis and appropriate treatment of these tick-borne disease disorders and diseases can greatly reduce the risk of continued diverse and chronic symptoms that can affect every system and organ of the human body and often, ev often every aspect of a person's life. Therefore, be it resolved that the Pike County Commissioners designate the month of May 20, 2023 as Tick-Borne Disease Diseases Awareness into Action Month and declare a focused and determined ongoing effort 
to educate the public and minimize risk to benefit and overall health and quality of life of the residents of Pike County by increasing awareness of the threat of infected tick bites and the potential seriousness of tick-borne diseases. I just want to add that uh, I've been a commissioner now for the last 16 months, and I was aware that there was this uh, tick-borne attack task force, but I learned a lot just in that 16-month period about the fact that it's not all about even just Lyme disease. There are a lot of other diseases. I tried to go through them there, not well, but I did. Um, and, and quite frankly, I've learned a lot about how to deal with it if you do find one. Literally two weeks ago, I had a tick. I found a tick on my arm. I followed through, sent it down to uh, East Stroudsburg, who performs a great service in terms of lab work. And they got back to me within two days to tell me that fortunately it was not a disease carrying tick. Uh, but what we've been able to do here and what the commissioners before me did to set up this task force has been really good for our community. In fact, it's become the model for the whole state. And we're, we're grateful that they did that. And we're grateful that we're able to continue to provide that service. Yes, it is uh, extremely important because it's an educational component in our county. Um, when it was 2015, there's a plaque on the wall here. Um, the, star, the, the person who founded this was Mickey Weiss, who lived in Milford Borough, and brought that to the attention of the county commissioners. Um, us not fully understanding of how a, um, a crisis it was in the county, how many people were suffering from some form of tick-borne diseases. You know, our role here with the task force, and there's some people who are going to speak here in a moment, um, it's a very active a committee that meets once a month here, and its basic role is to educate the public about ticks and the different diseases that they carry, um, and trying to remove from people's uh, vocabulary just using the word Lyme disease, because it's not just Lyme disease. And if you test it for just Lyme, you could be missing the other pathogens that Tony spoke of. Um, they're quite extensive. So it really should be called in all of our vocabulary tick-borne diseases, uh, not Lyme disease. And, and as Tony said, the state has recognized Pike County as a leader in this. We took this on in 2015, and there's a continual meeting here, and many times there's eight or ten people either in the room here or on Zoom, and from everybody in this county, whether it's the aging office, 4-H, um, our representatives in Harrisburg, trying to all come together so that we can educate the public. Again, education, not fear. We're not telling people that they shouldn't be going out into the woods in Pike County. They should just be aware of what their environment is and their surroundings. So. Um, it's really important that we have this, and we're so glad that the, um, the children from the school here are being educated on this, because that's the other component that we do, is making sure that the young people in our community that are educated about the harmful, the things that can occur if you get a tick bite, so they can tell their parents if they have a tick on them, that they can at least know if there's going to be any symptoms. And there'll be anything else? Or? No, the only thing, since we have a good room full, um, I've always said that most of the things we do are not political. When we see words like that that have to be read, we have a vote, and Matt and I vote for Tony to read it. <laughs> shortest guy, shortest story. <laughs> it's, it's nice to see all the young people here. Thank you. So now we're going to hand this over to Brian Snyder and uh, Rosie who, from the Tick-Borne Disease Task Force. And we're going to talk about the art contest and um, other topics of interest of the Tick-Borne Disease Task Force. Thank you. So I would like to thank Delaware Valley School District for allowing us to have this uh, art contest. Um, it was an art contest that encouraged the children to create a poster um, that explained what you should do if you find a tick on you or where the ticks live. Um, and we had one class that got together and did a beautiful, um, Brian, if you could hold it up, <clears throat> a beautiful poster that, that had Lots and lots of information on it. You guys, you kids, did such an amazing job. I know you all had something to do with making that poster. And I'd like to thank the teachers and staff of that class for helping them. And just remember, now that you know about ticks and you made this beautiful poster, it's your job to tell everybody, to tell your families and your friends so that they know what to do, not to be afraid, but to tell someone if you have a tick on you. Right? You guys did a great job. So what we have for you today, we have a certificate. I'm going to call out the names, and you can come and, and get your your certificate. And then we also have uh, a T-shirt. Brian, can you just pull one out? So we took your poster and made you a T-shirt with a poster on it. And so we're going to call you up. You can get your T-shirt and your certificate. Are you ready? All right. Make sure you smile. Someone's going to take a picture. 
The first one is Victoria. We will save that for her. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Berger, congratulations. Eliana Burns? No! Don't scare me over here! Miss Rosie's coming here. She's coming to you. Thank you so much. What do you say? Thank you.
Who was you on my video, right? My mom grew up in the town. Oh, I Thank you, Mr. Park. I appreciate it. Motion. Second. 
Motion to second any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion to set the hourly rate of Sierra Calabrese at $15.75 per hour as dispatcher in the 9-11 Center for a 40-hour work week effective May 22, 2022, pending the drug test results with benefits after 90 days. Motion. Second. Motion to second any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to set the hourly rate of the following individuals at $24.72 per hour as a full-time correctional officer for the correctional facility for a 40-hour work week effective May 1, 2023, with benefits after 90 days. Michael Severo, Kurt Keller, Joseph Rios, Darius Price, and Anand Pihara. Motion. Second. Motion to second any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion to set the hourly rate of Rosangelo Fernandez at $33.99 per hour as a full-time correctional officer Correctional facility for a 40 hour work week effective May 1st, 2022, with benefits after 90 days due to the terms of the collective bargaining agreement, District 87, Article 9, job classification and compensation for more than eight years correctional experience. Motion. And second. Motion to second any questions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to set the hourly rate of Christopher Leard Ledard at $21 per hour as temporary maintenance staff member for the correctional facility for a 40-hour work week from June 1st until August 26, 2022, without benefits. Motion. Second. Motion. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion to adjourn the salary board. Motion. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to reconvene the commission. Motion. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Under all business, motion to award the pig for the Pike County Jail Ice Building Roof Replacement Project to Pro Solutions Home Renovations, LLC, Total contract amount of $74,500. Motion. Second. Motion to second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Motion to advertise bids for the Springbrook Road Rattlesnake Creek Bridge Replacement Project. Motion. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. So I think we should just highlight that, that this has been a number of years that we're getting this done. This is the one, this is another one of the bridges in the county that we were able to take care of with the $5 registration fee. Um, if you're not familiar with Springbrook Road, this is a one lane, well, it's a road that leads into a development back there. And this is this bridge needs to be replaced because without this bridge, there is no other way into all of those houses back then. So, you know, I know we all know that we all pay that $5, but what you can see what happens every year with that $5 registration fee is that things are getting done, infrastructure is being replaced in this county. Um, I know fire companies and everybody are very appreciative, and so is being the township, that that bridge is going to be replaced. So, this is. Uh, this is a movement in the right direction. We've been putting band-aids on that bridge for decades. So, we have a motion and a second. Motion. No, we did. We did. We did. Okay. Um, that's the next one. We'll be opening bids. Number two, motion to adopt the resolution number 2324, Mental Health Awareness Month, May 2023. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, I'm just going to do 2A also. So, the motion to um, adopt resolution. 23-27. 23-27, which is Prevention Awareness Month also. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Mr. Schmolzley will read both of those. Resolution number 23-24, Mental Health Awareness Month, May 2023. Whereas mental health is a key component of every individual's overall physical health and emotional well-being. And whereas mental illness affects people of all ages, races, <coughs> ethnicities, and, and income levels. Whereas mental health conditions are not only common, they are treatable, and early and effective interventions can save lives and change the trajectories of people living with mental illness. Whereas only 50% of individuals with a serious form of mental illness seek treatment, feelings of personal shame and fears of social stigma and discrimination prevent many living with mental illness from seeking help. And whereas untreated mental illness leads to higher rates of emergency department visits, hospitalizations, school drop-offs, and suicides. And whereas stigma leads to fear, mistrust, and violence against people with mental illness who are significantly more likely to be victims than predators of violent crimes. And whereas stigma can be reduced by increasing the awareness of mental illness and available resources for those suffering from mental health conditions. And whereas greater public awareness about mental wellness can positively transform attitudes about and towards people with mental illness, making it easier for citizens to seek help. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Pike County Board of Commissioners hereby designate the month of May 2023 as Mental Health Awareness Month to be observed 
to raise public awareness and understanding of mental health, available resources within the community, and reduce stigma faced by people with mental illness. We'll wait till after I do the second one and, and do a combined conversation. National Prevention Week, and this is Resolution 23-27, May 7th through 13th, 2023. Whereas National Prevention Week is dedicated to raising awareness about the importance of substance use prevention and positive mental health. And whereas National Prevention Week is a public education platform bringing together communities and organizations to raise awareness about the importance of substance use prevention and positive mental health. And whereas National Prevention Week is a time for communities to come together, celebrate their successes, and advocate for prevention. Whereas National Prevention Week is sponsored annually by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration. And whereas according to, F, we'll call that the acronym S-A-M-H-S-A, the primary goals of National Prevention Week are as follows. One, involving communities in raising awareness of substance abuse and mental health issues and implementing prevention strategies and showcasing the effectiveness of evidence-based prevention programs. Two, fostering partnerships and collaborations with federal agencies and national organizations dedicated to improving public health. And three, promoting and dis disseminating quality substance use prevention and mental health promotion resources and publications. And whereas, in order to achieve these goals, the Carbon Monroe Pipe Drug and Alcohol Commission will continue to educate the community on prevention of raising public awareness about the importance of substance abuse prevention and positive mental health. Now, therefore, we, the commissioners of Pike County, do hereby proclaim the week of May 7th through 13th, 2023, as National Prevention Week in Pike County. Thank you, Ron. So, Shannon, I just, since there's a few people that can speak to both of these, um, I just want to make a comment about the, both of these. This is, these are really important initiatives that the county commissioners deal with. I'm not sure everybody realizes what our role is when it comes to public safety and human services. Um, this, this part of the population that is suffering through both uh, substance abuse and mental health are very well connected. You know, I, I'll tell you, we meet monthly, or every other month, I'm sure, I'm sorry, um, in the joiner board, and we talk about these uh, topics, and we talk about what we're going to do as counties to make sure that we, you know, solve some of these problems. These are very difficult problems, but, you know, when we come to mental health, I'm just going to share with you something that really resonated with me at the last meeting, and that has to do with the suicide rate in this county. Um, you know, sometimes we lose sight of that whole issue that's going on around us, um, but there are family members and friends of ours that are suffering. Between 21 and 22, the suicide rate in Pike County went up 47%. That's an enormous amount of people um, that are suffering out there. And, and we and the County Commissioner's Office, and we'll have Shannon speak, and Rob and others from uh, Carbon Mind, Mind of Drug and Alcohol, um, work diligently to make sure that we can bring support and services to these individuals before those um, terrible acts occur in their lives. And, and the ages of them are all over the place. Um, you know, we're trying to identify who they are because if they're people that are veterans, then, then we need to bolster the veteran services. If they're senior citizens, we need to bolster that. If they're young people, we need to figure out what's going on. But I just, I think the county and the residents need to know that, as I've been saying many times, most of us live really very comfortable lives in this county. But there are people in this county that are suffering, and we as a county commissioners and you as residents need to be aware of that. And we need to work together as a team to bring help to these individuals um, through alleviating <coughs> stigma and all of these things. Mental health has a stigma attached to it, and certainly substance abuse has definitely a stigma to it. And we all just need to get over that whole part and accept these people back into our society and help them where we can. So with that little soapbox I'm on, because this is a really big soapbox that I've been on since I've had this job, it's that important because there's not a person in this room that has not been affected by something either in the mental health or with substance abuse. Um, you, all, you all know somebody in your family, and we need to work together to alleviate this. So, Shannon, with that, and Rob, and whoever else wants to speak to this topic. Well, and I think we have some representatives from NAMI and the Okay, I'm sorry. As well. I, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had you on the list here. Joanne Van Joanne, I'm sorry. Good evening. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I mean, you really want to? Too. They hear enough from me. Yeah. 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 I, I'm sorry, I mean, she's got to go down this, you got to go through this. Did you want to start with the mental health piece and address that first? Of course. Do you want to? Yeah, okay. Wherever you like. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mary Beth Cunningham. 
I live in Hemlock Farms, and I have a son that has um, my voice falters. You'll understand why. He suffers from schizophrenia, bipolar, ADHD, and we've lived here for about five years, and it's been a very much of a struggle to take care of him. He lives with us. He was hospitalized three times. Um, we were given a choice at the end of the last hospitalization, either he could come home to live with us or go to a homeless shelter. That's shameful. I didn't know where to go or what to do, so we took Adam home. He's been with us for five years. Um, he has something called an ACT team that comes to the house. There's a psychiatrist, a therapist, a job coach, as well as get the other component. Um, so they come every week, and I'm very grateful for that. But this illness has taken him from a person that was studying for the CPA exam to a person that's barely functional. So my husband and I have had to grieve this um, progress, if you can call it progress, his decline. So we refuse to give up on him, and I have searched everywhere um, to get the resources. Um, in that light, when I came here five years ago, there was no mental health support for people like us or for people that suffer from mental illness. So I looked up NAMI. NAMI was in New York, and I was a member of NAMI in New York. Um, so I felt that vision to start a support group in Pike County and in other um, outlying counties like Wayne, Monroe, etc. Now the mission was accomplished. We have support groups that meet at Grandma's Bakery in Pike County, right outside of Hemlock, on the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month. And I can't tell you how that has helped me, how it has helped other families that are dealing with loved ones that suffer. Um, in addition, I'm, I'm a facilitator and a teacher for NAMI. I teach family to family courses. If anyone is interested in us coming to your organization and talking about mental illness, we would love that. Um, on the third Wednesday of every month, um, I run a support group that's for people that suffer from mental illness. In order to be a NAMI volunteer, one has to have walked the path. I have walked the path. My family has walked the path. And I personally have walked the path. I have had depression in the past. I understand, and I understand family members that struggle with this. So in that note, um, I would just encourage everyone to have less of a stigma for mental illness. It's terrible. One of the hospitalizations, I won't speak that much longer, okay. but I was waiting outside my son's emergency room door. He was in full-blown crisis. And when I was standing there, uh, emergency medical people with their, uh, with their stretchers were standing there, and they were doing this and rolling their eyes. Upon observing that, <laughs> a voice just came out of me and said, how dare you do that? I hope you have you never have a person with mental illness that's that person in that room screaming like a lunatic. Mm -hmm. That hurt me, um, and it really affected my perception of how people really view mental illness. These are people that work in the health community. Mm -hmm. So on that note, I remain positive that we can all make a change. Um, understand. You know, listen to the people that have mental illness in their family and suffer themselves with mental illness. Um, your support will be appreciated. <coughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So um, we continue, uh, you know, I work with the Drug and Alcohol Commission. I sit at a number of different task forces and work with the commission very closely on making sure that we have the resources we need in this state, in this county. Um, mental health, um, obviously, we're constantly in need of additional resources. Therapists, psychiatrists, um, 
but outreaching to NAMI, outreaching to our office, outreaching to MHDS, if there are additional needs in regards to mental health, reach out to one of us. We'll definitely help you get connected in the best ways that we can right now. Um, you know, obviously we continue to have conversations about how do we bring additional resources here. Um, Carol and I sit on um, the NSPI group, um, which is the Northeast Suicide Prevention <laughs> Coalition, all of the acronyms of alphabet soup. Um, but we continue to bring suicide awareness um, out into the community. We do a number of different events throughout the community with drug and alcohol, with mental health. Um, that, you know, when you see any of us at the tables, it doesn't mean we're just there for drug and alcohol. Typically I have NSPI information and we have drug and alcohol information and we have the county resource packets that we've created. So, you know, it doesn't just mean that you're seeing the drug and alcohol lady, it means we're gonna help connect you to whatever the other resources are gonna be that you may need. Um, you know, those of us that have worked in human services in this county a lot can definitely help kind of bridge some of those connections when it is possible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so suicide prevention, we do try to work very closely in the community with schools. Um, you know, during the pandemic, we know that many students are struggling, so we just try to provide them with resource cards. So we we touched on six different school districts, um, grades seven through 12, so it was over 7,500 students that we provided resource cards to. So if it even helped one student, we were happy with that. Um, we continue to do that. We are working closely, NSPI, so it's Wayne Pike, NSPI. Um, we are working closely with Long Halfback High School right now to hopefully initiate, initiate a program for our student athletes. Um, because we know there is a, you know, increased rate of suicide or high performance, which can lead to um, mental health and or suicide with, with individuals in that category. Um, so we are working with them to help support that. Um, we work very closely with NAMI, um, all different Wayne <coughs> Pike chapters to support them in whatever we do. Um, we're working with the younger students um, with our system of care, our Wayne County, um, Pike County system of care group, and NSPI. We're going in and reading the book, The, Hub the Hugging Tree, which talks about resiliency with youth and children um, just to bring awareness to, you know, that they can ask for help, that our people are out there. Um, to provide help. Last year, um, you know, Wayne Memorial Hospital with our Together Power School program, we worked with many organizations, including NAMI, where they went in with the seventh graders and they provided a program in four different school districts to all the seventh graders about saying it out loud, which means that if someone is struggling with mental illness or, or need help, they should go to uh, uh, their counselor, they should go to their teacher, they should go to an adult, a trusted adult, where they can ask for help and they can continue on that help. So, you know, we all work together. Um, it's never just one group out there that provides this education to provide these resources to, you know, any age out there. Um, so I don't like, we can go on because we do work very hard. And so, <laughs> thank you. Um, and then Robbie <laughs> runs our prevention department for carbon monoxide pipe drug and alcohol. And those of you that, you know, have been in and out of the Delaware Valley Schools for what, 30 something years now, have met our prevention uh, provider within our Delaware Valley School District, as well as uh, you should ask for Robbie, you want to talk? Yeah, the one thing I'd like to thank the commissioners for all their support. I know we go to those joint your board meetings, and we, it's, it's always like, like Commissioner Osterberg said, it's always a point of discussion with, with all three sets of our commissioners on that. And that's really the forefront. It's really, you know, we were, we're really happy to have the backing of, of the Georgia board and some of the ideas they came up with. I, mean, I think we're kind of at a crossroads with prevention. You know, Pennsylvania finally adopted the Pennsylvania Prevention Week, which is the same week as the SAMHSA week. But really, we're focusing more now on evidence-based programming. It's not the days of old where we just say, we like this program because it's somebody liked it, they like the puppets of it like this, but it's based more on science, it's based on the, on the data, it's outcomes. based on the PAYS data outcomes. It's all, it's all matching, you know, it's matching your data with what your risk and protective factors are. We're really, and one of the things that